Again, good morning, everyone. As you can see from this larger than life slide, I am Deb Tyson, the Associate Dean of Residential Life and the Director of Residential Education, which simply means I do two people's job and they give me one paycheck. I can say that my boss just walked out of the room. As my colleagues before me, I would like to thank you for joining us so early on this fine Saturday morning. I hope you had a chance to once again partake of our fine local cuisine and stuff yourself with monster pancakes and copious amounts of local maple syrup. I will be reading my remarks to you this morning as I have found that the older I get, the more I ramble. And while this approach may suppress my otherwise sunny disposition, I believe that you would prefer to hear a more low-key set of coherent thoughts rather than rambling enthusiasm. So home away from home, perhaps this is more of a question rather than a statement because the residence, hall are, residence halls are unlike anything your student has ever navigated in their entire lives. Even those students who have spent years in boarding school must make a transition to the life in the residence halls. Nothing new to your ears, but I believe it's worth repeating. Students from approximately 50 countries, speaking hundreds of languages, representing all of the world's major and minor religions and forms of spirituality, or the lack thereof, and the social products of every variation of applied values and philosophy, personality and preferences, come rolling into the residence halls every August and September. To think that pre-arrival conversations about matching bedspreads, favorite sports teams, or Facebook exchanges guarantees, guarantees harmonious living is, well, simply only wishful thinking. I can tell you that after 15 years of doing this. So in order to provide you with a few key takeaways, I have chosen to fit my advice into three words that all start with the letter that every student dreads. This is the letter E. So here we go. Please encourage your students to be engaged. Studies show that students who are engaged are more likely to persist or remain in college. Engagement in Dartmouth's residence halls can take many different forms. It can be engagement with one's roommate, with one's residence hall floor, or with the larger residence hall or college community. I'm sure that many of you have heard at one time or another, there just simply isn't anything to do here at Dartmouth. Well, there really is, seriously. There are over 3,400 programs in the residence hall system over a 24-week period that encourage students to gather and to enjoy each other's company. Hundreds of ways to engage with other cultures, religions, and philosophies disguised as ice cream socials, pizza parties, theater trips to Boston, dinners with interesting faculty members, group attendance at concert, concerts, athletic events, films, etc. You can rest assured that this institution has more, of its, more than its fair, ways, fair share of interesting ways to engage. But my student is shy, you may say, or they may not have meshed with their roommate a rather polite way of simply saying their roommate is a disaster. This is quite possible as well. So we have contingency plans for this. We have systems and strategies in place for students to access. First is the peer leader on their floor. You have probably heard the term UGA or undergraduate advisor. All UGAs are painstakingly selected and trained to assist their peers through transition. This is a highly competitive uh, program. But like all 18 to 21 year olds, and most of us, I suspect, some of them have a mind of their own and are convinced that they know more than the bureaucratic administration and may stray and give some skewed advice or no advice every now and again, a fact that your student may have picked up on. And while this rarely happens, as our assessment has shown, for 98% of our first year students have indicated they are satisfied with the UGA, your student may still be in the 2%. And as a result, we have several more backups to encourage your student to engage in their college experience. The first of which is the community director who is a professional staff member assigned to a residence hall cluster. These folks are, have obtained their master's degrees in counseling, higher education, or in a sundry of professional areas and have, and have dedicated this particular portion of their professional lives to the residence hall student experience. They are an experienced bunch with a great sense of humor and a desire to assist your student. But if this connection doesn't fit either, there are class deans, OPAL advisors, and a whole host of additional caring and supporting staff and faculty members who can help your student think through opportunities to engage in their environment in a more enjoyable and meaningful way. But here's the pin on which this, hin this advice hinges. I practiced that line, it still didn't come out. But here's the pin on which this, hinge, this advice hinges. Your student needs to own, simply own their own experience. The days of play dates and managed time are pretty much over, and engagement really has to be a personal decision that requires personal action. A young woman recently asked a guest speaker here at Dartmouth what advice she would give to her about dealing with the changes in her familial and cultural support structures. The speaker looked her straight in the eye and said quite clearly, young lady, this is your experience and you need to own it. You could hear an audible gasp from the audience and even a few chuckles, one of which is mine. 
one of which was mine because this was truly the basis for engagement. Each student owning their experience and moving through a third transition from the f familiarity of home through uncertainty of a new experience and then back to familiarity as a transition is what takes to be successful. This is a cycle that we as adults constantly encounter throughout our lives and our ability to navigate these transitions help to determine our successes and failures both professionally and personally. So whatever you can do to encourage your student to engage, please do so. My second word is explore. Please encourage your student to explore. While this initially sounds like engagement, there's a slight twist. Encouragement to explore in this context focuses, focuses on exploration of the myriad of academic options that Dartmouth has to offer. Within the residence halls, we have several strategies to assist students with exploration of academic options, the first of which is embedded in our first year residential experience program, commonly referred to as FIRE. FIRE has a well-developed curriculum with stated learning outcomes and a biannual assessment to ensure that topics remain relevant to the dynamic nature of the first year student population. The FIRE program is led by the UGAs through predetermined weekly topics discussed at floor meetings. The interesting fact about FIRE is that it is a non-required program, yet 80% of the students willingly attend these floor meetings. So we're pretty, pretty excited about that. Four of the 18 topics during the fall and winter terms are dedicated to specific exploration of academic life at Dartmouth. There's an academic advisors meeting, a discussion about the academic honor principle, which is very important, discussions regarding leave and term uh, options, and a meeting dedicated to internships. The second strategy is our faculty engagement program. This program focuses on bringing faculty into the residence halls to discuss all sorts of topics and has, prepared some very pop and has produced some very popular programs such as Poker with the Profs, an Iron Chef competition, and a discussion on how a faculty member actually becomes a faculty member, which is evidently somewhat mystifying to most people. So 62% of the students who participated in the faculty um, engagement program said that they would be more likely to engage with a faculty member outside the classroom than they would have been prior to attending the program. Uh, this is a very good thing indeed. Uh, we are a residential college for a purpose. We have small classes for a purpose, and uh, faculty engagement is one of those uh, key, key values that this institution holds. One final strategy that I, that I will highlight is our SIPS program, or Student Initiated Program. This program allows any student to request funding to support a program that they propose in the residence halls. These programs generally focus on academic interests, and while there is a stray birthday party disguised as a group study meeting every now and again, by and large, they remain true to the program's intent. So lastly, very quickly, as I am running out of time, please encourage your students, please encourage your students, let me pause here, please encourage your students to enjoy. You may be thinking based on last term's grades that they may be already living up to this advice, but there's a difference between engaging in an unproductive behavior and enjoying oneself most of the time. So enjoying all of Dartmouth's many unique aspects, aspects is one of the surefire ways to be successful in the residence hall environment. Spending the day with friends at Mount Musilock, skiing at the skiway, learning to golf on the golf course, kayaking on the Connecticut River, hiking the AT, etc., or even playing frisbee on the green, reinforce base, basic successful living strategies such as negotiation, sharing, empathy, and respect, and lay the foundation for a lifetime of friendship and camaraderie that helps to reinforce moments of growth and learning that impact success in their current living environment and may help to enrich both their professional and personal lives in the future. So in conclusion, a quick recap. My advice is to encourage your students to engage, explore, and enjoy for not only a great residence hall experience now, but to help lay a solid foundation for the future. I hope this has been helpful and that you enjoy the rest of your day.